if I can't do it by myself, that's a vision. Mm -hmm. Because if I can do it by myself, that's a goal. So don't let it being big scare you or make you feel like, oh, that's too big for me. You're on to something. Welcome to another delightful and delicious episode of Yummy Podcast, where we savor life's inspiring stories on a quest to help you find your ultimate, most meaningful yet. I'm your co-host, Crystal Khalil. And I'm Dr. Nicole LaBeach. I love it when you say delicious delightful you use these words to describe yummy yummy. yummy podcast (laughs) listen you guys we are super excited um because so much of what we've been led to in purpose Mm -hmm. and on purpose at this point in both of our lives is really helping people to unbind and unleash their unlimited potential in business and relationships we talk about a yummy life We talk about yummy business, yummy relationships, and in all of those conversations, people are often asking, like, how do I know what to do next? How do I know what my next move should be? And what we say is, what your next best move should be? Because we appreciate moves, right? But we also know that what you're looking for and seeking is to be strategic and to make those next best power moves, growth moves, yummy moves that are going to take you exponentially forward and towards what you desire. So, you know, sis, there are so many things that we've, been offering in this conversation of your next best move and it's hard to look at that question without thinking about our yummy model yeah absolutely absolutely you know our yummy methodology has three steps liberation activation and acceleration right and when you start thinking about what's your next best move it always starts with the liberation because you've got to be free to make a move right you can't be tied to the tree and try and make a move you've got to be free to make a move so and what, free free in the mind to make a move so when i think about um nicole i think about when i was you know, trying to make a decision whether or not I was ready to take the leap out of corporate America into entrepreneurship. And I was looking at my my career, um, the steps that I had taken, I'd finally achieved that dream job that I had been working so hard for. And I started to ask myself, what's my next best move? Right. Do I want to stay at this company till 65 and retire or maybe move out of the country with the company. What do I want to do? What does the rest of my career look like? And I could not see myself being bound to the company for that long. So I started thinking, what's my next best move? And I went to my company and said, hey, I think I need an executive coach. And I was told it was something that the company was not willing to invest in. Mm -hmm. Now, here I am at a senior position in this organization asking for help in creating, cultivating my next best move. And I was was told it was something they didn't believe in. So I decided to invest in myself because what I realized is I am the guarantee. And all of the knowledge and expertise I've gained at this company, when I leave, I take it with me. Yes. So an investment in me always has a return, a multiplied return back into my life. So I decided to invest in an executive coach. And one of the first assignments that my executive coach gave me was to define my personal brand. Mm. And I I gave her, she asked me for three words to describe my personal brand. 
And I gave her three words like performance, (laughs) (laughs) excellence, and I can't even remember what the third one was. And she was like, really? I said, yeah. And she's like, hmm. And I said, she's like, okay, I tell you what. Go and reach out to 20 people who know you personally and professionally. Send them a text and say, give me three words that describe my personal brand. Hmm. And I encourage all our listeners and viewers to try this exercise. Try 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 this at home. Now, make sure that you write down your three words first. Right. And then if you're really, really brave... You can put it on social media. Say, give me three words to describe my personal brand. Mm. You really want to know what people think Mm. and how people experience you. Mm -hmm. So the responses I received from family, friends, coworkers, employees were like um, leader, compassionate, teacher, mentor, sponsor, all of these things. And I was like, wow. So she said, now... Take all of the responses and look for the three common denominators. Yeah. So I come back and I'm like, okay, I see compassionate. Right. I see mentor. I see leader. She's like, okay, now let's look at what you put over here. (laughs) Does it compare to any of what other people have said? She's like, who is this person? Right. And I looked at it and I said, that's the company I work for. Yeah. That's their brand. I had been so ingrained in their brand that I had started describing myself with the words that they used to describe their brand. Yeah. And I was like, oh boy, I got some work to do because I don't know who I am outside of this box. Right. It was life changing and it freed me to start thinking differently yeah to start defining and redefining who i was outside of the company that i worked for oh that's good sis it opened up so many opportunities for me it was just like you know we talk about manifestation yeah right it was like once i could clear the blockages that had me stuck in the box it opened up a world of opportunities and it started attracting opportunities to me. So I invested in the executive coach and then I was like, well, really what I want to be is a speaker. I want to serve other people. I want, I want to travel the world, serve God's people without worrying about resources. Mm. That's what my soul said. Right? So it's like, in order to do that, I need to be a better public speaker. So after getting the executive coach, then I invested in a public speaking coach. Right. And I remember the trip from Atlanta to San Diego for the mastermind for speakers. I had never been so nervous. (laughs) All the way there, sis, the enemy was like, where are you going? Yeah, what are you doing what this are you for? Doing? What are you you doing? are not a speaker. Those people are going to be professional speakers. You are going to sound like a fool. What? Now, mind you, my company had me speaking at Forbes, speaking all over the United States, all over the world. In Germany. So I'm traveling and speaking. I, I've st- stood in front of large crowds, but I was doing it for somebody else. And the limiting belief said, It'll work when you're doing it under someone else's brand and for someone else. But who's going to listen to you? Who is going to listen to you? Who is going to listen to you? And you are not qualified to be a speaker. Who's going to listen to you? And all the way there on the flight from Atlanta to San Diego, I was just talking myself out of this experience. So much so. And y'all. It was a huge investment. Yeah. So much so that me and my husband had a huge fight about it. Mm. Because he was like, you said you weren't going to spend no money when you go. And I was like, but I need to do this for me. Yeah. And we had a huge fight. And I made the investment. And I talked myself down all the way on the flight. So much so that when I arrived and got to the hotel... I said, well, San Diego is pretty. I could just do some sightseeing and not go. Right. I could just go shopping and not go. I 
did I spend all that money? Right. I got up and I went the next morning and I was terrified. I was afraid to speak. I was kind of holding myself back. And I'm a great networker, wrote a book about it. Right. But I was like staying to myself because I was nervous. I felt like I was the least qualified person in the room. And I started pushing myself. And when I, the first time I got up to do my practice speech, I was literally, I could feel myself trembling. Yeah. And it's not like this is not something that I've done before. Yeah. But it was standing in my own power and using my voice to further my own purpose. Yeah. That was the scary thing. When I left from that mastermind, I felt so empowered and excited because I had been challenged for the first time in about 20 years mm-hmm. because my job was secondhand to me. I could do my job in my sleep. I knew procurement and supply chain. That was a no brainer, right? This took me out of my familiar zone yeah, and challenged me to do something that I wanted to do, but I was afraid to do. Yeah. It was the most exciting. I felt like a little kid all over again. I love that. It was so exciting to me that I was like, okay, what's next? Now we have this. And one of the questions that was asked before we left was, what's your plans for this year? Yeah. And I said, you know what? Now that I've got this public speaking thing, I want to write a book. And they were like, okay, great. So I wrote that on my vision board. I come back. A person that I had met through a mutual colleague invited me to come speak in DC. Right. Which I'm like, okay, I just did this public speaking thing. Let me take this opportunity. I go, I speak for her for free. I even fly myself there to support her. When I come off the stage, one of the people that was in line to meet me said to me, do you do corporate training? And it was my year of yes. So I was right. like, yes, of I've course. trained in the company that I work at. So yes, I do corporate training. She's like, take my car. Well, no, she said, let me take your car and I'll call you. She calls me the next week and she said, do you have a book? And I was like, you know, I just said that I'm going to write a book. She's like, so this is February. She's like, so is it going to be ready by July? And I said, oh, huh? no, right. my plan is to be finished by the end of the year. She said, August at the latest. Mm. I'm like, do this lady know something I don't know? Right. And is she listening to me? Because I. Right. Right. Do, do she know something I don't know? So I'm like, OK. She said, well, if you can have your book ready by August, you can launch it at NASA. Come on. I said, NASA as in the spaceships, <laughs> National yeah. Aerospace. She's like, yes. I'm like, look at God. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even want high enough. Yeah. You know, I said, I wanted to write a book. I couldn't even want high enough. Mm. When I launched my book at NASA in Virginia, it was mind blowing. I'm yeah. standing on the launch pad of a missile, sis, sending Ooh. pictures to my <laughs> friends like, I just launched my book. And they made me, they were my first customer. They made me an international bestseller. Ooh, I'm standing God. on the launch pad of a missile, sending pictures to my friends, putting things on social media. And one of my friends said, do you realize God has you launching from the launch pad of a missile? Mm. That's so good. And and let me tell you, like, what's coming to me is you can move an a swag, swag moment, swag Ooh, moment, to move, yummy swag you to, move. to move. You have to move. Yes. To move. You have to move. But we're talking about what's your next best move. And so, sis, as you're talking about a free mindset, yeah. you know it's opportunity for swag. Swag Yummy check. swag. Our shirts today say free women. Free women. You get it? Free, free women, women. Free women. women. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> Carry on. Continue. So Continue. You can get your 
free women free women t-shirt at crystal and dr nicole.com or you can check the show notes below to find the link when you're thinking about your next best move that requires that liberated mindset yeah because you can move in circles people do it all the time you can move here and then move back to here You can move here and move back to here. You can do five steps forward and seven steps back. But when you're trying to figure out your next best move, that liberated free mindset gives you the opportunity to stretch, to press, and to really say, is that the best? Mm that can be done? Is that God's best for me? When I think about this move, am I going to need some real courage to make this move, to get on this plane, to go to San Diego, to invest in myself? Am I working from a place of lack? Or am I working from a place of limitation? Or am I working from a place of freedom, empowerment, limitlessness and that's giving me the strategic possibility of the vision right the forward movement you know and embracing that feeling of fear putting fear in the backpack embracing it i think it was a yon levanzant that said if you're not so scared that you pee a little bit right (laughs) you're not pushing yourself hard enough right right yeah And and what we know is Fear doesn't like movement. No. So here's a cheat sheet. A lot of people say to you, you know, if you're afraid, that's a sign. We say that's a sign to keep going. Yeah. That is not a sign to not move because fear does not like movement. Its objective is to paralyze you. Yeah. So the kryptonite to fear is to move. Because the more you move, the more you start to see if this is a 10 mile run, by the time I'm at mile five, I'm halfway there. By the time I'm at mile seven, I'm not going back seven miles. I'm going forward three. So when you say put it in a backpack and keep pressing forward, don't let the bigness of the move, the bigness of the vision, scare you, be liberated enough to say, you know what? If I can't do it by myself, that's a vision. Mm -hmm. Because if I can do it by myself, that's a goal. So don't let it being big scare you or make you feel like, oh, that's too big for me. You're onto something. But it takes it takes you being able to push past the fear, but you also need to be vulnerable. Ooh. And that's a challenge. That's hard, right? To be able to say, I need some help with this. Yeah. I only know what I know. I don't know what I'm missing. Yeah. And I had to really be vulnerable and say, I need some help. I need some coaches. I need some people who have already done what I'm trying to do to show me the way because listen, I, I was at almost at retirement age. Right. So I'm like, I don't have, I'm not going back to college and all these things. I need the quick route. I need to cut. So I need an, an accelerated path. That's right. So walking in my purpose. So I need some people who have already done what it is I want to do to show me the way and being vulnerable enough to say, I don't know the answers. And you know what? When we connect with others in this journey of making big moves, they are powerful enough to ask us the questions that are going to help us to get insight, help us to get revelation, help us to figure out our strategy of what we're doing. Because sis, that, that was a big thing for me, that vulnerability conversation. 
I remember thinking for quite some time that I was introverted, I was private, <laughs> I had all of these sexy words because I was so, and I was so good at what I did with great humility, I was good at what I did so I could mask people being connected to me mm -hmm. by serving them in mm. humility and excellence. I could show up as the bright and shiny bulb, do what was necessary to hold the space for them, for their yummy, hold the space for their next best. And because it elevated and helped them so much, they often didn't think about, did they really know me? Mm. So I could mask that in the privacy, in the being private, and no one could push that question mm. of is it privacy? Is it really introversion? Or are you just invulnerable? Mm. Until I was in a coaching experience where I had a 360. Mm. And what I found out was, you know what? That's been a really cool mask. Mm. And I've worn it and wore it well, because when you're a nice person and you're a giving person and you show up and you're a caretaker and you're brilliant, you're all these things, people don't often recognize they haven't met you. Now, sis, tell, tell our audience and our, and our um, listeners what a 360 is, because I don't know that everybody's experienced right. that. That's, that is, that's a Ooh, powerful it's so tool. Yummy. It's so yummy. So a 360 is when you have an assessment done on you where people can really speak to how they experience you from all sides. So possibly the people that you report to, your boss, your manager, your peers, so that's around you. These are your colleagues that are at your same level, potentially in an organization, and people that report to you. So you are now seeing yourself, your leadership, how people experience you from a really clear lens because they're asked these questions confidentially and they're not sitting next to each other and saying, hey, John, what'd you put for number seven? Mm -hmm. Hey, Tammy, what'd you put for number six? No, they're speaking from their experience of you. And when all of this information comes together, you get to see the patterns. Yeah. And this was not a new information for me if I'm transparent. Um, you know, I remember a, a wonderful woman in my life who was a pastor at my church saying, oh, Dr. LaBeach, you know, I went to a house warming for Pastor Monique. And there were so many people there that knew you, but they didn't know that Pastor Monique purchased your house. So they were at her housewarming, and when she expressed to them, oh, this used to be Dr. LaBeach's house, she said, I realized how private you were because you knew most of these people, but they had no idea <laughs> where you lived. And I said, yeah, yeah, I am pretty private. Oh, my goodness. My 360 and that coaching experience pushed my mask and, and, and helped me to see, no, you're nice, you're qualified, you're excellent, you do all these things, you're gifted, you've cultivated it, you check, 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 check. But you're in this coaching experience to get to the next level. You can't get to the next level if you don't allow people to connect with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a, a barrier, there's, there's a wall, mm -hmm. there's, there's plastic over that uh, electrical socket. There, there's no ability for them to intimately connect with you so they haven't met you. Mm. And what this 360 is saying is your great next best move 
is to learn how to connect mm -hmm. with others. That, that, that's what's going to unlock some yummy for you that you don't even recognize. Take the mask off. Take the mask off. If you're a high achieving woman and you're listening to this, people around you probably think you have everything you need or desire. But Crystal and I both know you've realized there's more and you've been called to more. We base our programs and framework around helping women like you find their limitless selves, providing a space, a safe space for them to break through ceilings and remove the walls that limit experiencing the life they truly desire. Join us for our Woman Unlimited Live. Check out the link below. You'll find coaching, community, and connection you've been looking for. See you there. Now back to this yummy episode. That's powerful. And you know, sis, I, I had a similar experience. Um, I've had multiple 360s as a leader. Yeah. And I honestly used to look at it like a, a, it was something I had to get an A on. <laughs> right. right. I needed all my responses to be great, especially yeah. for my team. I needed them to say that I was the best leader that they had ever, ever had. Ever. And when I would read the responses, it was like really like, I need them to affirm me yeah. that I am the best boss they've ever had because I'm the boss that I always wanted. Right. 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 I am. I'm great. I bring them breakfast in the morning. Oh, yeah. I fight lions and tigers and bears for oh, them every my. day. <laughs> I am the best boss that they have ever experienced. And I remember talking with the coach going over my 360 and I was so proud. Yes because my scores were good and my feedback was good. Yes. And he said, you know, do you ever, um, you know, have, do you have issues with people pleasing? And I was like, what? What'd you say? Right. Don't you see these comments of yeah. how amazing I am? Yeah. Why are you trying to come for me right now? Yeah, he's <laughs> like, you know, I just wonder, you know, if you're challenging your team enough. Mm. Because sometimes, you know, if you push, right, people might not like you if you push a little bit. Yeah. But if if you're if everybody's like, oh, she's so great, she's so then that could be a sign that you're a people pleaser and you may not be challenging them. And I was like, uh, what you say? Right. I was like, I don't receive that. <laughs> I don't receive I don't I receive, don't that. receive that feedback. And I remember that year my um in my performance review my boss said to me you know you're great you do a great job he's like but i don't know if you're re ready to go to the next level because i don't know that you can hold your team accountable mm. for the next level you're always protecting them you're like the mother bear you mother them mm. but i don't know if you are building other leaders yeah and I was like, oh, man, I really had to sit on that. I had to think about that. I had to take that to my coaching, yeah. to my coach and say, what does this mean? And yeah. I learned that the and I started doing a lot of self work on leadership. I really I enrolled in a John Maxwell leadership program yeah. and I started really reading a lot of books on leadership. And what I learned was leaders build other, other leaders. leaders. Leaders have influence. They use their influence and they build other leaders. And I wasn't building other leaders. I was building a team of people that needed me. Mm. So I couldn't take time off because who's going, if I'm not there, can't nothing get done. Nobody can make a decision. Mm. That was affirming me. Right. That I was the great boss. Right. Because I had all the answers. And I said, I need to make a shift. I really need to make a shift because if I'm the one with all the answers, then I am chained to this place. And that question of vulnerability that you were having an encounter with in how am I being affirmed? Am I building other leaders? This person is giving me some feedback that is tough in this moment. But is it the truth? 
Mm -hmm. right? It, is it real? Is it the truth? It's so necessary yeah. in figuring out your next best move because the relationships that you're in, are they're telling you things constantly yeah. about Break whether moves. or not you are being authentic. Yeah. That authenticity conversation is key because your your strategic next best highest comes from a place of being liberated in your mind so that you can move in action. In action to move, you have to move. Move in action authentically, understanding who you are, whose you are, and being the first to validate yourself. Absolutely. And, you know, just to be frank, this game of the yummy life, yeah. yummy career, yummy relationships, it's chess, not checkers. That part. So those of you know who know the difference, you know, checkers is when you make a move based on what your opponent's move is. In chess, you are six steps ahead. Yes. Already strategically figuring out if they do this, then I'll do that. If they make this move, then I'll make that move. You have already gone ahead to figure out where you need to be for the checkmate. Yeah. So this is a game of chess. So then you have to ask yourself, what chess moves am I making Yeah. in my yummy pursuit? Yeah. What chess moves am I sitting back waiting on others to make opportunity for me, to open doors for me? Or am I actively making moves, yeah. putting myself out there and making moves so that I can get to the other side, so that I can live my yummy life, have my yummy career? Yeah. And those things within in business and career, that looks like investing in yourself. That looks like networking. That looks like joining organizations um, that are in your career field, right? Yeah. If you are um, in the IT profession, are you in IT organizations and, and, and professional organizations where you can network with yeah. other people? If yeah. you're in marketing, are you in marketing organizations, right? Where where do you need to be to find other like-minded people that can help you in your yummy career? It's chess. We don't sit back and wait for people to come and find us. Right. What moves are you making? And I've seen it so many times over my career in managing and leading other people where you see people who are unhappy, They've been in a position way longer than they needed to be. They've overstayed the assignment, but they are waiting for somebody to recognize their value. And as a result, they're bitter. Yeah. They have resentment. They come to work every day and make everybody else miserable. Yeah. And it's because they're playing checkers and not chess. And on the personal side, when we think about, because we always say the same tools that you use in business and career yeah you use them with family you use them in romantic relationships and we we are really good and trained at praying for rain but not going to buy an umbrella mm. for when the rain comes so i'm just gonna pray for rain oh lord please let it rain <laughs> right but then when it does rain i'm running for cover yeah. As if I don't remember what I've been asking for and drawing towards me is rain. Mm -hmm. So I've been praying for a better relationship with my kids. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be accountable to what they say and how they're feeling. I keep hearing the same feedback, but I'm hearing or should i say listening to respond mm -hmm. as to why you're wrong i'm not listening to hear what you're saying so instead of recognizing that hearing you is a proactive opportunity to reposition myself so that we can have a greater relationship mm -hmm. i decide to dismiss you mm. 
and I dismiss you when you were Sarah in the previous relationship, when you were John in the previous relationship, now I'm in six relationships later. Same feedback, Mm -hmm. but still playing checkers. My move is to villainize you so that I don't have to get the tools to do this part of my behavior in a way that nurtures our relationship. Instead, I keep making moves to sabotage our relationship. So when you're playing chess, not checkers, there are some moves that you have to make and be strategic in recognizing your power mm-hmm. so that you can make the moves that are that are going to have a multiplicative effect. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you know all you've ever used to heal your relationship is an argument or a shutdown, yeah. being able to say, that's not working, yeah. but I don't have anything else. All I've got is the back of a shoe. To press on this nail and make this nail go into this wood. And I've tried it like six times and the nail keeps bending. Mm -hmm. Who has something that will work on a nail going into a piece of wood without interruption and that nail having to be broken or bent? Who has it? Mm. I don't care who has it. I just need that thing. I'm not judging that thing. Chess is saying, I'm not judging the thing. Mm -hmm. I need the thing. And if I ask the question. And I'm not judging who comes with the thing. thing. Because a lot of times we'll do that. Right. Right. You will pray and ask for rain. Right. Right. Or you will ask for the tool. And then a person says, oh, I've got something that will nail that in. And you're like, what's your qualification? Right. I don't want that from a woman. I don't want that from a woman. Yeah. I don't. I, what should, I, I, you got a PhD? What, what 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 you got? What can you teach me? Right. So now you're in activated suffering. Okay. <laughs> yes, that part. You, you are in full-blown suffering. Mm-hmm. Because instead of saying, who has a thing? And someone gets to say, oh, you know what? A hammer will do that. Mm-hmm. I got a hammer. Or, or you can go here and get a hammer. You're like, no. I'm going to beat this nail with the back of my shoe from a different angle. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying to you is be liberated in your mindset so that you're thinking seven steps out, six steps out. Be active in action Mm -hmm. and look for the points of possible acceleration, the people, the places, the things, the the divine uh, grace and strategy and favor mm-hmm. that will accelerate that next best move into like domino effects. And the good news is you don't have to do it alone. That part. We have hardware store tools. Okay. <laughs> we have a hardware store of tools. And and there are people, right, that have been where you're trying to go. You that just part. have to ask for what you need. Ask for what you need. Or show up saying, I have no idea what I need. Yeah. But I know what got me here. Yeah. It's not going to get me there. We, You know, we mentor a lot of students. Yep. And a lot of times we'll hear them say, well, I'm afraid to go to networking events because I don't really know what I want to do. And I feel like I'll be stupid if I go up to somebody and I don't have a good question because I don't really know what I want to do. And I'm like, what's wrong with saying I don't really know what I want to do, but I wanted to network with some people in this field and find out what it's like. And they're like, I can say that? Yeah. Listen, we're going to share something with you. Crystal and I have been in some of the most amazing rooms that really the only explanation, the only singular explanation is God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't line up with where we come from. It doesn't line up with, with real math, right? 
But as much as she's done, as much as I've done, she's broken glass ceilings. I've broken glass ceilings. She's been a leader of leaders. I've been a leader of leaders. We've had success on multiple levels. To date, right now, we've had a show on TV, all of that right now. You would be surprised how many people are willing to help us yeah. because we are just willing to say, we need help. We'll be in multi-million dollar rooms where people are making a million dollars in a day, mm -hmm. in a week. And we'll say, hmm, can you tell me how you did that? We're coming with questions. And we're trying to understand what are the strategic moves based on people who've made strategic moves. Mm -hmm. So it's being vulnerable to, enough to say, I don't know. And because I am free in my mind, I have expectation mm -hmm. that when I show up, the yummy is waiting for me and being willing to invest yes being willing to invest in yourself because you know that is a guaranteed return on your investment because you take it with you you take it with you and you get exponential growth and acceleration when you invest in yourself so this has been an amazing episode of the yummy podcast yeah we're gonna leave you with this it's your move your move